Hi, my name's Angelo, and today we're making pickle brine chicken wings. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this. If you've been here before, sorry I'm not better looking. So today, we're doing pickle brine chicken wings. And I know I say today, but it's actually tomorrow. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna brine chicken wings in pickle juice using our briner bucket. And then, after a few hours in the brine, we're gonna take those chicken wings out, we'll rinse them, we'll dry them, and then we're gonna put them on a cooling rack and put that in the fridge so that that skin can get nice and bone dry so that when we do smoke them tomorrow, they're gonna be extra crispy and very good. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the chicken, we're gonna get them in the bucket, we'll get some juice on, and we'll get in the fridge for a few hours. Okay, so I'm using Costco's Party Wings. These come in packs of six. Each one is about a pound. They're super cheap. Um, these are the best deal you're gonna get on wings, and I like them because they're party wings, so they're already separated. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna open this package, and we're gonna put them in the brinder bucket. You can brine these in anything you want. Right? You can use a pot, Tupperware, any food safe container you want. I like to use a brinder bucket. It's designed specifically to brine food in. And really what it is, is it's just a food safe container, but if you see inside, there's notches and grooves, so that when we put this chicken in here or anything else that we're brining, and then we add our liquid, it's not gonna float to the top and it's not gonna stay out of the brine. It's because we use this sort of locking mechanism, we push the food down under the liquid, and then we lock it in. It's really helpful, super you know, easy, convenient, you don't have to worry about anything bubbling up or floating to the top, and then that part of you know, the meat isn't gonna get brined. So let's open these up, put these in the bucket, and then we'll add our pickle juice. Okay, we have our chicken inside the bucket, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our brine. I am using Best Made Dill Juice. I got this at Walmart, it's like four bucks. Super cheap, and it's a full gallon of pickle juice. I'm gonna use just this. You could use this and then add your own seasonings and flavors, but I'm using just this. We're doing the pickle brine because it adds a little bit of tang, it keeps the juices in, the salt penetrates a little bit, and it comes out really well. But you also need to be careful because a pickle brine is somewhat aggressive, meaning it's just gonna be a few hours. We're talking maybe two hours, maybe three tops. Um, any longer than that, and it may end up tasting like a pickle. So um, you have to be careful because it is an aggressive type brine. Um, if we're doing a whole chicken, maybe I'll leave it in for a little longer, but we're just doing little wings. There's no reason to do much longer than a few hours. So I'm just gonna pour this in, and essentially, I just wanna cover the chicken wings. I don't need to fill this to the top. I just wanna cover the chicken wings, because then we're gonna take our lock and we're gonna hold them under the liquid. If you have jars of pickles at home and wanna use that juice, you can. I just use this because it's easy, it's convenient, and I'm not gonna have a bunch of jars of only pickles, no juice lying around. So let's get this in here. Okay, so all of my wings are submerged, and now I'm just gonna push them down a little bit and then lock this into place. And now we can see here, well you can't see, but I can, that they're completely submerged, none of the chicken is sticking out. So we're done. I'm just gonna put the lid on with my clean hand, wash my hands, and then put this in uh, our fridge for a few hours, and uh, when we get back, we'll rinse them, we'll dry them off, and we'll put them on the cooling rack over here. Been a few hours, so our brine is done, and now what we need to do is drain the pickle juice, take the chicken out, dry it off with some paper towels, and then we're gonna put it on this um, baking sheet with the cooling rack inside. Uh, the reason we wanna do this is because we want that skin to get really, really dry so that when we smoke it, it gets really, really crispy. A baking sheet with a cooling rack allows air to circulate around the entire thing and really air dry it. Any uh, liquid that we do not pat off, that drips down, will just sit in the tray and the chicken will sit above that and dry out. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you look at that, that ultimate uh, turkey video I did, same exact concept. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump this in the sink. Um, the trick here, if you're using a brine bucket, the trick to dumping it is leave the lock in so that we can just pour it.
without losing any of the chicken. So now, it's as easy as taking this out. We're gonna use a whole bunch of paper towels and just drying them off. You'll see here that the chicken has turned green. And that's what happens, it's not a big deal. Um, but I told you it's somewhat of an aggressive brine. It's delicious, it's great, it adds a tang, uh, it keeps it nice and juicy, um, but you have to be careful. Too long and it will taste like a pickle. So that's why we just did a few hours. I think it was two and a half, two, 220, something like that. Uh, and now I'm just gonna keep drying these off, get them on this tray, and then we'll go ahead and get this tray in the refrigerator. Okay, so all of our chicken's on the rack. We've dried it as best we can. Um, and now, the next thing we're gonna do is just put this in the refrigerator, just like this, in the rack, in the fridge, open air. And uh, we'll let these dry out overnight, and then tomorrow we'll come back and smoke them. I've done a couple of tur uh, chicken videos already, chicken wing videos. You have probably seen me use the rotisserie. We're not gonna use the rotisserie tomorrow. We're just gonna put these on the grill directly, um, and we'll grill them that way. Uh, we're still gonna smoke them. We'll have some smoking wood. Uh, I'm thinking we're gonna do the same time and temp, so 400 or 350, 400 for about an hour. Uh, and that'll get these really nice and crispy. We'll get us that smoke flavor and we don't have to deal with the rotisserie. So let's go ahead and get these in the fridge and then I'll see you tomorrow when we're ready to season these and then get them on the grill. All right, our wings have been in the fridge for about 24 hours, naked. Uh, the skin is very dry and they're ready to go. So now what I've done is I've lit my fire here. Um, I put my smoking wood in now. You can put it under your coals, you can put it on top like I did, or you can wait till your fire's lit and then add them, or you can put them on top of the grate, on top of the heat deflector. For me personally, I put them in here with this charcoal now. This is only going to be about a 45 minute cook. So I don't need a ton of smoke for a very long period of time. So I don't need to play tricks with where I put it or you know, I don't need it to last very long. So I just put it in here now. I also feel like it helps get my temp stable faster because if I have my grill lit and then I add wood, the wood's gonna catch and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna slow things down. So um, you see, we also have the accessory rack. It is very cold outside. Um, so what I like to do when it's cold is I need to get your, my heat deflectors um, acclimated. So if I just took these, what are incredibly cold heat deflectors and threw them on here when my grill was at 400 degrees, they would eventually crack and break. Um, so I wanted to come up to temperature as the grill comes up so they're not necessarily shocked. I have them on the accessory rack because we're going for 400 degrees. Sort of a, a rule of thumb is if you're doing 300 or 350 and lower, you put your heat deflectors on the bottom of the divide and conquer system. For 350 and higher, and in our case, 400, you want it on the accessory rack at this mid tier. So I'm gonna leave this open like this. We'll let the grill come up to temperature because I don't wanna smother it just yet. We'll let the grill come up to temperature. I'm gonna close the lid. We'll let these heat deflectors get nice and warm. And then we'll go ahead um, once this is stable, we'll close our heat deflectors, we'll put the, um, the grates on, and then our grill will be ready. So right now, I'm gonna leave this here, we'll close the lid, we'll let it come up the temp, and then we'll go inside and we'll season our chicken. We've taken them out of the fridge. You can see they're very dry. They still have some of that green uh, coloring and then it's a lot of pink and a lot of red, and that's just, these are bone dry. That's exactly what we want. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna season them up. So what I like to do is move them into a mixing bowl, toss in all of my seasonings, and then let them sit um, in those seasonings before we put them on the grill. Today I will be seasoning with Meat Church Holy Gospel and Meat Church Honey Hog. So that's what's gonna go in the bowl for right now. And then right at the end, I'll do a small dusting of Voodoo just to give it a little bit of spice. So what I'm gonna do now is take these wings, put them in the bowl, and then we'll mix in our seasoning and actually, sorry, uh, some duck fat spray because these are bone dry. The seasoning is not going to stick. So we're going to spray in some duck fat spray, get them nice and wet. Then we'll go ahead and put our seasoning on and toss them in that. I'm also going to spray this on my grill grates to make sure that these don't stick when we go out there later to flip them and take them off and stuff like that. So let's move these into the bowl and then we'll season them up. So we're just going to do a nice healthy coating of um, duck fat spray. You can use olive oil. Um, I don't like mustard or anything like that for something like, you know, quick chicken wings. Um, so we're gonna use this duck fat spray again, olive oil works. We're just gonna give a nice coat 
because we want to make sure that this seasoning sticks. Okay, those are mixed really well, so now we're gonna dump in our seasoning. Um, I don't have much, um, I don't have much honey hog left, but it's all going in here. Mix that up. Now we'll add our gospel. And obviously you can use whatever seasonings you want for your flavor profile. I like um, a little sweet heat. So um, we're using meat church, the gospel is the all purpose. So salt, pepper, garlic, essentially. Um, honey hog is very sweet. And then uh, I told you we'll finish it with a touch of voodoo, which is, uh, has a nice, a nice little kick to it. All right, so these are all seasoned up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let them sit like this while we wait for the grill to come up the temperature, another 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, it'll also give it some time to, to soak up whatever it can. Um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these on the grill. This is gonna be 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, I'm, I don't need to check the temp because I know that it's gonna be 45 minutes to an hour. If you want a meat probe and you want to check them, uh, you'll use an instant read and you're looking for 165, but it can go all the way to 180 or so and not be dry and gross. So there is some, you know, some wiggle room and something like wings. Um, so we'll give this another 15 minutes or so till that grill is up to temp. We'll put these on. Uh, after about 20 minutes, 20 something minutes, I'm gonna flip them because we need to make sure both sides are done. In the rotisserie and all my other videos, obviously that's just what's happening. So I don't need to do that. In this case, I need to manually flip them, obviously, um, but they're, they're gonna cook faster. So the rotisserie, as it rotates, you know, what's on the top is not getting any heat and then it comes back down. In this case, it's 400. It'll be close the entire time, so it will cook much faster or at least 15 minutes faster. So we'll let the grill come up to temp, we'll get these on, and then we'll go from there. Okay, we are up to temp. So let's go ahead and get our wings on. I'm sure there are more graceful ways to do this, but we're just gonna dump them on. And now I'll spread them out with my tongs. So I do want to keep them closer to the middle because that's where the heat deflector is. And towards the outside, because our heat deflector is on the higher layer, um, it is possible for flames to wrap around. Um, so we just want to make sure that everything cooks as evenly as it can. If you've seen my videos, you know that I tend to have a hot spot in the back. So when we come back and flip them, we're also gonna have to do some rearranging. Okay, so we're all set. I'm gonna close this lid, we'll let this go. Like I said, we're gonna come back in 20 minutes and then we'll flip them. And uh, if your grill has a hot spot, mine definitely does, I'm gonna flip them and uh, rearrange them. So we're using the Kamado Joe today. Um, regardless of what your grill is, whether it's a pellet grill or you have a, you know, a, a kettle or whatever it is, same timing, same temperature. Um, you may have to position things differently, but the time and temp and the process for everything else is exactly the same. So let's get this lid closed because I don't want my fire to get too big. And we will come back in 20 minutes or so and uh, double check to see if we need to flip anything. Okay, we are at the 20 something minute mark. So let's get in here, take a look. Yeah, these look, these are looking good. Yep, that's the perfect, that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm gonna flip these and then uh, we'll do some rearranging because as I mentioned before, the hot is back, the, the back is hotter than the front. So we're gonna flip them, do some rearranging and then we'll come back. Okay, we've got them all flipped. Now let's close the lid. We'll come back in another 20 minutes or so and check on them. Uh, and then we'll sauce whatever we're gonna sauce, season whatever we're gonna season, and we'll be done. So let's close this lid. We'll come back in uh, 15 or 20. Okay, we're done. So I took them off the grill. We immediately put them in these mixing bowl. I hit them with my seasoning again, not a ton, but just a, a touch. And then I tossed them and then I hit them with some sauce and I tossed them. And you do that immediately while they're still really hot so that when that sauce comes on, it can tack up. 
you don't just want like a puddle of sauce, right? You want it to tack up and really work its way into that chicken. And these came out great. You can see here, we've got a touch of um, some charred spots, which I, I absolutely love. Some super crunchy, couple charred bites in with the rest of it. And we've got some beautiful color. The skin is crispy. And because the skin was so dry, as soon as we put that sauce on, as soon as we hit it with the seasoning, it tightened up and sucked it in. So these came out great. It's a pretty straightforward process. You just have to wait a little bit while, while they're drying in the, um, in the refrigerator on the rack. But overall, I, I love these wings. I make them all the time. If it's between this and the rotisserie, I actually don't know. They have completely different you know, textures, if you will. But overall, easy wing process, ton of flavor, and uh, nothing better than a pickle brine. So let's just go over the process real quick and review what we did step by step. Okay. So we're done. You can see that my grill is still on. And that's because when we were done, I opened all of the vents and I'm just letting that fire get big and burning everything off that's inside. So we had done ribs over the weekend and now we just did the chicken. So there's some gook in there. So instead of just shutting the vents and shutting the grill down, uh, every now and then I actually open it all wide up, let that fire get nice and big to burn off anything that's in there and get it nice and clean for the next cook. So just a quick recap. So we did pickle brined chicken wings. We took our chicken, we brined it in the pickle juice for only a few hours. Then we took it out, we rinsed them, we dried them as much as possible, and then we put them on a cooling rack in the refrigerator for 24 hours to get that skin super, super dry. Then we came over here, we smoked them at 400 for 45 minutes to an hour. Then we hit them with a little more seasoning right at the end while they were still a little you know, fresh off the grill. And the ones that we were gonna sauce, we just put them in a bowl and we tossed them in some sauce. And that's it. It's that simple. Wings are super easy and you're never gonna taste anything better than charcoal cooked wings, especially charcoal cooked wings that have been pickle brined, seasoned and smoked. So if you like this video, um, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm always happy to answer questions and uh, I'll see you next time.